So let us get started. Okay. Hello, everyone. Thank you for coming to our second meeting of fall quarter. We'll be starting now. Um, so before we start, we just want to say very quick disclaimers and rules um, to just be sure to respect officers and the guest speakers uh, during the meeting by muting yourself while the host is speaking, using appropriate language in the call and chat, um, being polite to everyone in call and chat. And um, we've had past experiences where um, we've invited medical professionals or healthcare workers and someone asks diagnostic questions and we want to prevent that from happening um, out of respect for them. So just make sure to prevent that. Um, just catch yourself if you do. Um, if you, if any members do happen to not respect the Zoom meetings or the guest speakers or anybody else who's speaking, um, I'm going to say what Shania used to always say is that any one of the officers may cast their wrath and unfortunately you'll be kicked out of the meeting. So um, just um, heads up from that. Another note is that the meeting is recorded and will be posted on our YouTube channel. So if you're uncomfortable with being put on YouTube, just uh, save your questions for the end of the meeting when we stop the recording. And in order to participate in the attendance point system, you need to sign out on the Google form at the end of the meeting with the word of the day. And we will put the Google form in the chat at the end of the meeting. And if you can't attend the meeting live, you you still have 24 hours to complete the Google form from when the video is published onto YouTube and you can still earn full points. And at the end of the year, the member with the most points will win a free prize. And you can also win bonus points for participating in uh, community service events like volunteering and donating blood. And just send this proof to our club email. So if you guys are interested in what we have coming up for the rest of the quarter, um, on November 12th, we have a guest speaker who is a nursing student. So um, for all of my nursing majors, stay tuned for that. Um, we also have another event coming up on the 26th of November, but that is still in the works. So um, definitely sign up uh, for our email list, check your emails, um, where we'll be releasing more updates on uh, future speaking events. Um, hi, Shana. Um, and also on December 3rd, we have our MLA bonding. So come and be stressed with us right before finals week. Um, also, we have a spreadsheet of active opportunities made by Amy and Megan. Um, it's great organized and a really great resource. So um, just scan the QR code with your phone and you'll be taken to the spreadsheet, which has opportunities consisting of conferences, programs, um, internships, shadowing opportunities. So definitely utilize this resource to your advantage. Okay, so without further ado, um, we're gonna go ahead and introduce our guest speaker today, Leandra. So thank you so much for joining us. We're so excited uh, to hear what you have to say, your journey and all that good stuff. Yeah. I'm gonna stop sharing. Okay. Um, okay. Let's see. Okay. Um, oh, wait, do I share? Sorry. Yeah, go ahead and share and then you can just click okay. whenever you want to do the next slide. Okay. Yeah, but if you are not able to, I can do it. Just let me know. Okay, let me pull up the slides right now. Um, okay. Yeah, but in the meantime, um, yeah, hi everyone. I'm Leandra. I'm an MS2 at the Kaiser Permanente School of Medicine in Pasadena, California. Um, I'm part of the inaugural class, meaning that there have been no classes above me. So I'm the first class at the school. Um, it recently opened. And so we just admitted our M1. So there's an M1 class right now. Um, and I graduated from UC Riverside in 2020, and then I went to medical school straight through. Let me try to pull up my slides really quick. Okay, let me see. Sorry, I should be really good at Zoom by now. No, you're good. And if you have any like difficulties, uh, feel free to ask me when you want me to take over. Okay, um, okay, let me try. Okay, and then I just press slideshow, right? On the, on the top. Okay. Okay, can everyone see that? Yes. 
Okay, perfect. Um, okay, so yeah, table of contents. Um, this is what I'm going to be going through. And then feel free to ask questions too um, in between if you want to. Um, okay, so the intro. Okay, so yeah, I'm originally from Orange County, California. Um, in terms of just like what I like to do outside of school, um, I'm interested in exercise. I actually started an exercise and medicine group at our school. Um, I'm interested in like health promotion. Uh, I do have a YouTube channel as well. I started during quarantine just about my journey. And I really did it because I didn't see a lot of videos about UC Riverside, especially going and applying to medical school from UC Riverside. And so that's why I just decided to like make a fun YouTube channel. Um, and then I do like fashion um, and beauty as well. Um, so I have been attending Kaiser um, since 2020, second year student. And that's my Instagram if you want to follow me and my YouTube. <laughs> uh, and then in the picture to the right, that's a picture of our school. It's really pretty. It's like very high tech um, uh, kind of modern architecture. And then that's a screenshot of my YouTube channel. Cool. Um, so all of you are in college right now. Uh, and so I think that there's a lot of differences between college and medical school. Um, and I'll kind of go into that a little bit. Um, but just a little bit about me. So I majored in biology. I graduated with a bachelor's in science. Um, and the reason I chose biology is because I was interested in science. And also if you complete the biology uh, major requirements, you just end up completing a lot of the classes that are required for medical school. So it's kind of like really easy to get done with all the prereqs, um, but you can be any major when you apply to medical school technically. And I chose UCR. Um, I have a whole video about this on my channel. I actually um, got into UCLA and UC Berkeley, um, a lot of the other UCs, San Diego, Irvine and things like that. But I chose UCR because um, number one, I think finances, I got a scholarship from UCR. Uh, number two, location, I wanted to be in Southern California because I'm from Southern California. And um, th for number three, a lot of support. So. The UCR undergraduate college opened up a medical school affiliated with UCR. And so there's a lot of pipeline programs that funnel students to the UCR School of Medicine. There's a lot of opportunities for students to kind of do what you're doing, get involved with clubs, shadow, have these opportunities. And I think that I felt like the school really wanted their students to succeed. Um, and that's the reason why I chose UCR, but it was a hard decision. Um, in terms of my extracurriculars, I was part of this community of pre-health students called Medical Scholars Program. It was tied to the UCR School of Medicine. Uh, it offered tutoring and like a mentor-mentee group or matching program. So I benefited a lot from that. One of my best friends today is actually was my mentor from that program. And then I was a resident advisor. So uh, do you all live in dorms at your college or no? No? We're a community college. So, oh, okay. um, yeah, but I believe Shania, you could ask Shania, I'm not too sure, but it is, you see like app season soon, so we could answer that soon. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Um, yeah, so I... Uh, there's dorms at UCR and um, if you apply to be an RA, you get the opportunity to like direct a building of residents. It's a really good leadership experience working with the large people. It helps on your resume. Um, you meet like super awesome people uh, and you get provided room and board. So you don't have to pay for housing either. Um, so I did that for three years uh, and I really enjoyed it. I was also involved in the recreation center, which was our gym on campus and I was on the board. So I helped uh, like overlook budget and make programs for the gym. And I basically found all of these opportunities through like people, like just going to class, making friends when you hear like about something through one person or another. Um, the resident advisor position, I think that was just a mass email that was sent out to everyone and then I just applied. 
Uh, so my tips to current undergrads is to get involved with as much as you can in the probably the first two years when you go or I saw at community college. So just get involved like you're doing now. Um, just find things that you're really passionate about, because I think when you apply to medical school, eventually the quality of your work is much more important than the quantity. So rather than being part of like 15 clubs, it's OK if you're part of like three and then you have other things as well, but as long as you can talk meaningfully about it and you had a good experience and you can write about it and talk about it in an interview for a good amount of time, um, that should be a good sign that you're, you're doing things uh, right. Um, Amy, you raised your hand. Hi, yeah, I'm wondering if you did any like research by chance when like you first got there or like maybe you started your second year yeah, I did research, um, I think starting my second year or my third year, maybe. Yeah, um, I was in a biochemistry lab with basic science research. So it was at a bench pipetting. Um, and I knew I didn't want to do research as a career, um, but I really liked the lab because of my grad student that I worked under. She's amazing. And we had a really good um, relationship. And um, like, I still look up to her today. So uh, I really liked it. In terms of like, do you need research to go to medical school? You don't. Um, it all kind of depends. Like, for example, UCR School of Medicine, their mission statement, if you look at look at it online, they're not really all about research. Um, so different schools will kind of in their mission statements say like if they're really academic and toward research or maybe they're more community oriented. Um, I personally was more interested in community health. And so I focused on that more in my application. Um, okay, so classes and medical school applications. Yeah, so classes needed for medical school. This is like a really common question. Um, it varies from school to school. Uh, but to be safe, I would say usually take a year of English, math, chemistry, and OCHEM with lab, biology with a lab, and usually a biochemistry class, which is an upper division class. Um, psychology, sociology suggested. I did not take like any comprehensive psych or soci classes. Uh, if you do, it probably will help you because it's on the MCAT, so you will have to learn about it either way. But I don't think you need it to get into most medical schools. And how many did I apply to? So I think I applied to over 30 medical schools. That sounds like a lot, which it is. Um, each medical school costs money to apply to. So the way it works is like you have this primary application that's sent out to all the schools. Then the schools will send you a secondary. And the primary application costs money. And each secondary can cost from like $50 to like $150. So it's a lot of money to apply. Um, so it's really like the goal is to apply only once and to get in after your first application season. Um, and the reason I applied to so many schools is because California is really competitive. Um, if you're coming from California, which all of you are, um, it's just so competitive. Like there's so many applicants because there's so many schools here. And a lot of people who grew up in California don't want to leave California. Um, so it's I think it's it's always better to apply to a lot of schools the first time through rather than reapplying. And I applied in my junior year. So the timing is really important to plan ahead because you want to take your MCAT early enough, then you want to form your application, ask for letters of recommendation, and have all of that ready by the time you apply. Then when you apply, you have to wait and you're waiting for interview invitations. So you have that whole year, which was my senior year, to get interview invitations, go to the interviews, which were in person at the time. So I would have to fly to Boston, fly to Baltimore, um, and that all takes time. And then you get in after that for that next year. So you really have to like plan ahead. Uh, so if you do not wanna take a gap year, like I did not take a gap year, you should apply um, in your junior year. Um, in terms of what made me stand out, yeah, this is like a really hard question um, because every school is so different. You could you could get admitted to like the number one medical school in America and then not get admitted into like a much lower tiered medical school because they're all looking for different things. So I 
I think what helped me on my application is my um, community health work. I did a lot of things regarding women's health and I advocated for like emergency contraception at school and free women's toiletries and all like the bathrooms and all that. Um, so that was something that I was passionate about. So whatever you're passionate about, I, I think it's great if you find opportunities in that field and you really show that um, you have a sustained interest in it, not just for a year, but more than that. And then you can talk about that a lot on your application. You don't have to know what you wanna do. Like you don't have to say, oh, like I, I'm gonna be a pediatrician or I'm gonna be OBGYN or anything, but just having something you're interested in. Some of my friends, they did a lot of things regarding like immigrant health um, or uh, some people um, were really involved in research, like in neuroscience research. And that was their thing. You just have to figure out what you um, are interested in and then just try to pursue it as much as you can. Um, so that would be like a big tip to future med school applicants. I think that a lot of schools appreciate when you show a long interest in something. So like at Harvard Medical School, when I interviewed there, like the, um, I forgot the Dean of Admissions or whoever was running it, like he said, like you all were granted an interview because you have a sustained interest in something for a long period of time. So it's better to be in a position for you know two to three years rather than just a couple months so you can talk about it a lot more in your interview and your application does anyone have any questions about that yeah so i do see a couple um john williams asked did you shadow doctors during your undergrad years i did i shadowed a family medicine doctor yeah ucr is pretty well um well equipped in like primary care. Their mission statement is to push for primary care in this um, Inland Empire region, which is an underserved region in California. Um, so I, I learned a lot about like the patient population in that area through family medicine. Did UCR, like I know Davis has a system where they help connect you with internships and all that stuff. And, um, and like, like uh, maybe internship, shadowing, all those really cool resources. And we're in the middle of college app season. So a lot of students could be applying to UCR or like uh, wherever. Hold on, give me one. Um, so do you know if UCR offers, offered that and that's how you got your connection to the family doctor or you had to cold call or it was a personal connection? Um, I, for me, it was like cold calling, like I just found this health clinic nearby. They do have a lot of um, programs, though, that connect students. I don't know necessarily for shadowing, but they have like summer programs that you can apply for. Um, and then in that summer program, you get to meet different doctors and work on projects and things like that. I didn't apply um, for those specific programs. I think I had like other things going on in my summer. But uh, in terms of my experience, I, it was definitely cold calling. Any other questions? Um, yeah, we have a couple. I don't know if you guys can. Oh, okay. I don't think, are we making open the chat? Oh, perfect. Okay. Yeah, I can see. Sorry. Um, did I shout out? Will you? Gonna... Yeah. <laughs> um, how competitive is the process? It's pretty competitive. So Forbes actually just, um, I think last year, yeah, last year they released a um, list of all the schools and like the most competitive schools to get into. So Kaiser Medical School um, is actually the most competitive school from last year because I think because it offers um, free tuition, um, it's a, like a really big uh, benefit or something to think about when you apply. Um, so I think the person, like the acceptance rate, I think there was over like 10,000 people who applied and um, it was 50 spots to get in. So it's pretty competitive to get into medical school. Um, what was your GPA? If you don't, I had a 4.0 GPA. Um, I, yeah, I work, I, I don't know. I worked really hard in college. I don't know what to say. <laughs> um, uh, is GPA really important during undergrad? I think average GPA to apply, and I, I, I this is what I was told. I don't, haven't looked up the numbers recently, but I think it's 3.7. Um, I think GPA is important. Uh, it's not the only factor, but having a good GPA definitely will not hurt you. And just say your first year of college, you did not do well, or even your, like whenever, 
any year in college if you don't do well because of a health issue, a family issue, schools will take that into account as long as after that point you show a positive trend, that's really important. So if you had a really bad semester or something, um, you can still get into medical school, just make sure that you show that positive trend and you can explain it on your application. They will give you room to explain. Um, <laughs> great, okay. Okay, so I'm gonna move to the next slide. Day-to-day um, -day breakdown, okay. So yeah, my schedule is a little bit different this year. A first year medical student at Kaiser, all of every single day is class. So you're in class, I was in class maybe like eight to 12.30 some days and then eight to like, I forget, three o'clock I think other days, um, but it's mandatory classes at my med school. Other med schools, it's not mandatory. Um, it just kind of depends. But this year I'm in clinic now in the hospital. So I have my experiences um, actually like helping with the team. And so uh, Mondays and Thursdays are reserved for class. So I'm in Pasadena going to class. And my schedule this year is like eight to 6.30 at night, full of class and then eight to 5.30 on Thursdays, all class. And then Tuesdays in the morning, I'm with OBGYN and I can either be in clinic in an outpatient setting, um, meaning like the patient comes in for their appointment and they leave the same day, or I'm in the hospital and labor and delivery where women have babies and then they stay overnight. Um, and yeah, it's like a traditional hospital setting. And then Wednesday in the morning, I'm in family medicine, which is basically when you all go to your doctor for like a checkup, that's family medicine, and then pediatrics in the afternoon. And then Friday, so today I was in surgery in the morning um, with vascular surgery and then psychiatry in the afternoon. So the way Kaiser does it is a little bit different from most med schools. Um, most med schools, your second year, you're still in class. And then your third year is when you're in clinic. But at my school, they put clinic a little bit earlier than most schools. Um, and we really had like a packed first year. So I would say most med schools, your second year would be class every day, practically. Um, okay, let me see. I had a quick question. Yeah. So would you say the rigor changes from first to second year since you said first year you're in lectures the whole year and then second year you have two, two times a week of lecture and the rest is... Clinic. Yeah, so um, that's a good question. I, um, well, my first year I was like super stressed. I was like, oh my gosh, everything's so hard. And literally what I would learn in like two weeks would be like three months at UCR. Like it was just so compacted. Um, but the good thing about med school, most schools at least, your lecture material is pass fail. So you just need the 70% to pass and they don't, they should, or at our school, they don't rank you. Maybe other schools do, I'm not sure. Um, but in clinic, we have a grading system. So it's honors, pass and fail. So it does kind of add more pressure. Um, plus we have to take boards, board exams at the end of the year. So I think there's definitely more stress this year. Um, yeah, I'm definitely more stressed for time, I think this year than last year. It does get a little bit harder, but it's more enjoyable because I'm in the clinic. Yeah. Okay. Uh, there's a few more questions in the chat. Okay. Um, oh yeah, how do you prevent student burnout with class clinicals taking up nearly all your day and studying too? Yeah, um, I don't, I hope, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, I, I'm definitely not burned out right now, but I think it's definitely a, a valid question. It's something we talk a lot about at our school. Um, after exam weeks, we have this reach week, which is our wellness week where we just learn about wellness and we have a lot of free time. So they give us that time so we can just go to the beach or travel, do whatever we want to just relax. Um, what I try to do is just have an hour before I go to bed to just watch Netflix or do whatever I want just to kind of decompress for the day. So I have that little bit of time um, before bed. Um, how do you find time to not only tend to school but make sure you take care of your mental health and social life? Um, I think it's time management. I, I definitely wish I had more time in the day. I can't get through everything. Like this year we have clinic, we have class, um, we have research and extracurriculars. And I wish I could do all those things in one day, like all my work, but I can't. 
And so it's kind of hard. Um, it's just choosing what to do certain days and then eventually circling back to it. Uh, I try to prioritize my social life. Like this weekend is Halloween, right? So I'm definitely going to go out and celebrate Halloween or else I like will regret it because um, I just, I don't want to miss out on my youth at the same time. I think that's one thing I think about a lot because I did not take a gap year. A lot of my classmates are older, um, but it's it's kind of hard seeing on social media, like my friends who are the same age who can go out and they're not in medical school and um, I have to study a lot. So I just try to make it a priority. Um, did I already take my USMLE? No, so um, I most med students, I think all med students actually, they take it after their second year. So I'll take step one after my second year. Um, and were you able to, yes, yeah, so it, by the time I take it, it will be pass fail. I, I think some people have it pass fail now just because of COVID um, or something like that. But yeah, it will be pass fail for me. Did I ever have moments of self doubt when med school became very stressful? Yes, I did. Um, I still have self doubt all the time especially in clinic uh, when the physician asks like a lot of questions and I don't know the answer. Um, it's definitely an environment where a lot of students have imposter syndrome, kind of feeling like they don't belong or they just got lucky and they're in med school. Um, but I think it's important to like embrace humility, but also have self-assurance that you worked really hard to be here you deserve to be here just like you all you know deserve to be in college right you worked hard to get in and um just having that inner confidence but definitely self-doubt is normal um did i ever have moments of oh sorry i read that do you have a set schedule for every day i don't have a set schedule no um because my schedule is really set when i have to go to class so aside from that instead of having like eight o'clock I do this, nine o'clock I do this. I like to just write down all the tasks I need for the day and then I just cross them off when I'm done. Um, so some tasks will take longer than others. Um, okay, cool, so I'm gonna move on. Um, learning curve, oh, sorry, okay, learning curve, yeah. So uh, medical school is nicer for me than university because it's pass fail, however, I think that it's harder in some ways because you have to cram so much information. When I heard about medical school being pass fail, I was like, wow, okay, that's gonna be like pretty easy, you know? Um, but it's like hard because you have to learn so much information. Um, uh, how to develop good study habits now. So I was talking a little bit about this um, earlier, but it's really important, I think, um, where you all are at now to figure out what works for you. So do you like having a pen and an iPad? Do you like typing out your notes next to the professor slides? Do you like having a notebook and writing in it? Do you like flashcards, right? Um, are you like a visual learner and you need to like draw things out and make mind maps and diagrams? Like whatever works for you, um, will work, right? Like if whatever works for you is something you should always stick to. Uh, and it's good to test that out now. Uh, because in med school, like I'll say, like I'm one of probably one of the few people who actually write things down in a notebook. I love to write down and that's how I've always done it. I like pen and paper um, and I'm definitely in the minority. Most people, they just type up their notes. Uh, and that's just something that's unique to me, but I know if I can't type up my notes. I tried that in the beginning of med school and I just, it didn't work for me. So I know what works and um, it's gonna be different for everyone. And the only way to try it is to test it out. Uh, content difference. Yeah, so I did a whole video on like university versus med school. So definitely check it out. Um, but basically the biggest difference is that you have to cram like so much information to your head at one given time, it's really difficult. And then when you go to clinic, um, you're expected to draw on the information that you learned really long ago. Because in college, I kind of relied on, okay, I'm gonna take one class, I'm gonna know it really well. Then when I move to the next class, I like can forget about it. It's just like out, out of my head, but you can't do that in medicine, right? Like <laughs> You have to like kind of know everything. Um, so it, it's a little bit harder that way. Um, there's a question, what is my personal preference of learning style? So I like pen and paper. Um, I don't know why, I just, I'm old school, I guess. <laughs> um, 
if I could do it again, I mean, I had a pretty fun time in college. I think I really enjoyed it. But if anything, I would say my freshman year, I just wish that I had explored a little bit more um, just to meet more people. I think by the end of college, like all my friends were pre-med, which is totally fine. I just um, I just wanted to meet like people who were like pursuing different things. And uh, yeah, that's the benefit of college. Like everyone there has so many different interests. Um, so words of encouragement, I would say, yeah, be persistent. It's going to be really hard. The hardest part when I think back to my journey of getting into med school is the MCAT. Um, the MCAT is just brutal. It's like cramming so much information. You feel all this stress, like you need to get a good score. And uh, I only wanted to take it once and be done with it. So it was very stressful and just kind of being persistent but keeping your mental health um, a priority at the same time, like knowing when to take a break is important and then ask for help when you need it. So it's really important to find mentors and surround yourself with people who will help push you forward um, and believe in you. And then have that confidence, believe in yourself. But all this is easier said than done. I recognize that. Um, okay, and then, oh yeah, okay, sorry. The word of the day, I, didn't, I don't know. Okay, any questions? <laughs> Um, yes, I had a question in the chat. Um, okay. What type of resources did you use to study for the MCAT? Like, what are your, what's your top resources? I used Kaplan. Um, I really liked it. That's the only thing I used. Um, that's the only third party resource. So the double AMC is the organization that um, gives out the MCAT. And so they also sell their own resources like a practice test. And I recommend everyone, no matter what you use, Princeton, Kaplan, whatever, buy the double AMC resources because those are the people who will like literally write the MCAT. Thank you. Um, I have another question. So you were talking about getting letter of recommendations earlier and I know yeah. you graduated in 2020. So your last year would have been online, right? Or oh no, I was still in, her oh yeah. Wait. So I graduated winter quarter. So up until that point, every person. Okay. Yeah. Um, but still, like, how did you uh, find, get, would you, how did you, like, develop relationships with your professors? Yeah. Um, so getting letters of rec is kind of like a tricky thing to navigate, um, mm -hmm. especially in college when there's so many students, right, per class. I think what's important is, one, you should do well in the class. Um, you don't necessarily have to get, like, an A plus, but, you you know, probably, preferably like above a C, <laughs> you can be a B or an A, um, and you should show interest, meaning you should go to the um, office hours. And uh, don't just go there and kind of like sit in the corner, but go there with questions. Professors like it when you take an interest in literally like what they've dedicated their lives to researching. Like if you think about it like that biochem class, like your professors, like a biochemist, like they do research in this, they're really interested in it. So um, as long as you show genuine interest and you wanna do well, not for like just a grade, but you wanna learn, um, I think that will come through and it will make a good impression on them. And then ask for the letters of rec early. Uh, don't ask like right when you apply when other people are applying because they probably have gotten so many requests. If you're a second year right now and you have a professor you know that likes you and you did well, ask for it right now. They can write you a letter and it's up to you if you want to use it or not, right? You could find other people in the future. If anything, they can write it now and then later on you can just ask them to redate it when you apply, whether like you take gap years or not. You can just say, oh, I'm applying now. Like, can you just change the date? Of when you wrote this, you know, just so it's updated. Um, but it's better to ask earlier than later when you're fresh in their mind. Thank you. That's great advice. Yeah. Um, oh, oh, wait, sorry. Go ahead. I don't mean yeah. to cut it. Um, you said that you did not take a gap year. What were your reasons for um, not taking that gap year? And do you wish that you had taken one? Um, I, yeah, I did not take a gap year because um, I just felt competitive in my application. I think that I've always had the goal of going to med school straight through. I think gap years are really for people who want, like, maybe want to travel or want to, like, 
do something fun in the meantime, or two, they want to get a different degree. Like some people got master's degrees in my um, cohort right now. And then, or another option, you might need to take a gap year is because you want to strengthen your application. So people take postbacks to um, boost their GPA. Uh, that's really popular, but I felt pretty good on my application. Um, the world kind of shut down when I graduated, so I couldn't travel or anything. Uh, so I just went straight through and I, I don't regret it. Um, I, I think I, I made the right decision for me. So you said you graduated during the pandemic. Um, so was your learning or motivation for like attending med school affected at all when the pandemic hit? Um, my, like my decision to attend? I guess, um, I guess decision to attend or even when it came to, you know, hitting those rigorous classes in like when the world was just like experiencing so much. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was definitely a weird time. I, so I knew I would graduate and then, so I graduated in March of 2020 and March is kind of when like my school sent an email like, oh, we probably should not be in person anymore. Um, so it was kind of a weird time, but I don't think it really affected like the way I felt about my application or um, my journey at that point. Um, it was just like a shock, like I didn't know what was happening. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna move to the questions in the chat. Is that okay? Go for it, yes. Okay. Um, when do I find time to exercise? Yeah, so um, it's hard. I used to exercise pretty frequently in college, but now I exercise after class um, on Mondays and Thursdays, and then I'll exercise on the weekends. Um, and then I created that exercise and medicine group at school, like partly because I'm interested in it, but also just to keep myself accountable. Uh, so it's like just for fun. Um, uh, and I'm interested in, so I do weightlifting. Um, I do like squatting and like um, deadlifting. I'm trying to get into that. Um, I was really into it in college. Uh, how long did I study for the MCAT? So I studied two and a half months. I spent my summer studying between sophomore year and junior year. So um, I spent that whole summer studying. That was literally it. Uh, okay, Julie, yay. <laughs> um, you love weightlifting. Uh, so how did I plan the whole studying process for my MCAT? I think I, I just worked backwards. Um, so even before the summer, I like went on Reddit, I don't know, on Google. And I was like, well, how did people uh, study for your MCAT? And then I just saw Kaplan was really popular. I got Kaplan. And then um, I kind of planned it out like, okay, I'm going to read this book, hopefully by this month or this week. And then I'm going to take practice tests here and then so I, I really planned it out like I did Kaplan first reading the material Kaplan questions then at the very end I did the double AMC questions so whenever you all study for your MCAT do the double AMC at the very end you don't want to waste that resource that is the best predictor of what score you will get on your MCAT because it's the people who wrote the MCAT um, so save that to the very end when you feel the strongest in the material uh, what's the most effective way I found to study like after lectures, how do I review my notes? Yeah, so um, I, I think testing myself is really effective. Um, I think studies have shown that rereading material is not very effective. Um, so it's really good to test yourself with practice questions or flashcards. So after every lecture, I um, so during lecture, I take notes, and then after the lecture, I condense all my notes to just the pertinent information that I want. So instead of having like 40 slides, I just have like two sheets of paper, and I have like all the information. And so before the quiz or exam, I will just read everything in my notes, make flashcards, and then I'll do the flashcards before I get tested. And that's the way I review my notes. For retention, that's a little bit harder. I mean, I'm in clinic and sometimes they ask me a question from like first year and I'm like, I don't even remember that. So it's really hard to retain that much information. Um, but I think the more you review something, the better it, you'll retain it. So just through repetition, uh, you'll remember things. Um, do I condense my notes right away? I try to. Uh, I try to condense my notes right away after lecture just because my school offers free printing and I just wanna get it over with. 
Um, that's like the only reason. But yeah, I try to do it right away when it's fresh in my mind. For my experience, how significant? Yeah, so um, how significant is the MCAT score? Pretty significant. It's definitely not everything, just like your GPA, right? Med schools take a holistic look at your application or some of them say that they do. So they look at your life experience, where you grew up, what your parents do, um, any disadvantaged background. Like they really try to capture you holistically. Um, so your MCAT score is not everything, but I definitely think it will help you if you have a good MCAT score. Uh, if you wanna apply to like the top 10 med schools in the country, if you wanna go to Stanford, Harvard, Johns Hopkins, right? If like, if you wanna go to those places, you it's, I mean, definitely important to get a great MCAT score. You can look at the median MCAT score that they admit, um, and it's usually really high. Uh, so it's important, but it's not everything. If you have a significant aspect of your application that makes you really strong, that's not your MCAT or your GPA, that can help you a lot too. Um, but most people don't have that huge experience uh, to propel their application into like the top. So I think most people who apply to those schools, like they generally have a good MCAT and a good GPA. Um, oh, that brings up something else too. So when you apply, there's this thing called MSAR, M-S-A-R, and it's a compilation of all the med schools in the country and like their median GPA, their median MCAT, um, how many people applied there last year. So it'll give you all the statistics so you can figure out which schools to apply to strategically. Did I work under undergrad? Yes, I did. I worked as an RA, so I got paid for that. I worked on the board for student government and for the recreation center, and then those two were paid positions. And then I was a tutor as well. Um, if I did, yeah, so working definitely builds a lot of skills. Um, I think it's important. I think everyone should try to work if they can in school. Uh, it's something extra to put on your application that's not just like medical related. Um, and you can talk a lot about it. I think it makes people interesting uh, and it will build your social skills, leadership skills. Uh, I think it's definitely beneficial. I feel like pandemic made me forget. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't, pandemic's hard. Um, but you all are being creative with the Zoom meeting. So I think as long as you show that you're creative in some way, um, I think med schools will understand. <laughs> um, how did I decide on Kaiser? So that's a really good question. Um, Kaiser was a new school, which is like risky <laughs> because it's new. Um, it was really hard. I it was not an easy decision. Um, I have a video on my YouTube channel showing the other schools I got into. Um, and so uh, that's really it might be helpful for you to watch as well. But um, overall, I think finances help. So Kaiser offers free tuition to its first five classes. I'm their first class, so I have free tuition. On top of that, I got um, a scholarship for my living expenses. So I don't have to pay um, like to live in Pasadena in my like apartment or anything. Um, we get a stipend that goes toward it. And then Kaiser Med School, even though it's new, Kaiser Permanente is not new to medicine. Kaiser Permanente is like this huge organization. Um, they teach residents, they have residency programs, they're familiar with medical education and the environment is really supportive. I, um, all the faculty are just so engaging and amazing uh, that I wanted to be in an environment that was that seemed intent on having their students succeed and fostering um, fostering just happy and healthy doctors. They really emphasize wellness and that was important to me as well. Um, and I don't regret it now being a second year. I feel like I made the, a good choice. Uh, did I feel overwhelmed? Um, yes, I do feel overwhelmed with academics and extracurriculars. It's really hard to find that balance. Um, I think because uh, when I apply to residency, my um, my classes, like my classes are pass fail. So at this point, I'm just like, okay, I just need a pass and I can focus on my research or any extracurriculars. So right now I'm focusing more on that. Um, it It's definitely overwhelming. I don't have like the perfect answer of having to find that balance. It's just, I try to do both of them <laughs> as much as I can. If I focus more in class one day, then I'll spend a couple more hours the next day like doing research or something. I, I just, I try to do the best that I can. Um, how did you tend to school plus work and the sorority? 
Yeah, so I, um, I don't, I, I think I just like time management. I use a planner. I'm pretty organized in my day. I write down like all my assignments. I cross them off when they're done. Um, I really just try to do my best in like being organized and uh, while prioritizing my mental health. Um, I joined a sorority in my third year because I wanted to meet people outside of pre-med classes. And I was like, this is just gonna be something fun, like literally just for fun. It has no like, nothing to put in my resume just for fun. And I like met so many amazing people in it. So I definitely think it was the right choice. Um, so yeah, I think just being in tune and like reflecting on like your mental health and then your academic life and your personal life is really important. As long as you're in tune to that, um, you'll be fine. <laughs> uh, do I know what specialty? I don't, I should know, <laughs> or I should know soon. Um, I, right now I'm interested in a couple things. I like, I liked my surgery experience so far. So I think I would like to do something procedural. Um, so I am interested in dermatology, but I'm interested in like plastic surgery too. Um, and I'm hoping to shadow like ophthalmology, which is like eye surgery and urology, which is um, like the male genitourinary area surgery. Uh, so yeah, we'll, we'll see, we'll see. <laughs> Uh, am I a physical planner or a digital planner? I'm a physical planner. I'm old school. I like the pen and paper. <laughs> um, yeah, I, any, sorry, any other questions? I know I ran these really quick because I just wanted to make sure I got to all of them. Yeah, does anybody else have questions? Oh, okay. Another question popped in for you. Oh, perfect. <laughs> um, do you think retaking your MCAT more than two times will affect your chance of applying? Um, I think, I think uh, from my opinion, right, and I'm not on any like admissions boards, I think, um, I think you definitely want to aim to take that MCAT once, because if you, they can see your score. So if you take it and you decrease in score, that's not going to look good. And I think that um, the more you take it, it's just more stressful, more money spent on it. I think just really focusing on taking it once. Uh, if you do take it multiple times, as long as you like increase your score substantially, probably like by five points or more, I think it will look fine or good even. Um, but I really uh, don't recommend taking it more than once unless you know that you can increase your score 100%. Like you have to really go ham. Um, do I have a TikTok account? I don't, I have an Instagram. <laughs> um, so you can follow me on Instagram, I'll put in the chat, but you can follow me on YouTube as well. Um, yeah, I don't know, I don't have a TikTok. Uh, do certain schools have limited times? I don't, that you can take the MCAT. I don't think so, no, I don't think so. I think the, like the number that I've heard the most someone taking it and applying is three. Um, but, uh, I, I think definitely if you just try to take it once, yeah, I think that will look the best. Do I stay up late to study or try to sleep as possible? I try to sleep as much as possible. I need at minimum like seven hours of sleep or else I'm just a zombie. Um, I, I don't try to stay up late to study. No, I think sleep is one like so important when you sleep, you're, you make connections in your mind and you like put everything together. Chloe, someone's calling out Chloe, Amy. Um, try to try to sleep. Sleep is so important. Yeah, try to sleep. Um, I heard you got into multiple UCs. Yeah, okay. Um, at John, yeah, I did get into multiple UCs. Um, I, I have the very first video on my YouTube channel is like over 10 minutes. I kind of delve into it. Um, so definitely check that video out. Uh, I, I go into a lot more detail about like what made me choose UCR. Um, you just had an OCHEM test. <laughs> uh, any other questions? Yeah, feel free to ask if anybody has any more, any of the members. Um, and if not, uh, what's the hardest class you've ever taken? Um, an undergrad? Um, what is? 
<laughs> Ochem was kind of hard, I agree. Um, but I think the hardest class was probably like my general bio class because it was about like phy phy phylogeny, you know, like the trees of like all the organisms. That was like oh, the yeah. worst class I've ever taken in my life. I just didn't understand it. And I just remember thinking like, I, this is like an English class to me. Like, I don't even understand what's going on. <laughs> like, I couldn't even pronounce it. So that was probably the worst class because I didn't have an interest in it. It was like a ecology or something. I don't remember. Yeah. Oh yeah, ecology. I literally just took that last year and I don't have an interest in it either. And for bio, it's like easier for me. But when I was studying, I was like, I'm not feeling this. Yeah. Like, <laughs> it was so hard to study for me. Yeah, um, exactly. Relatable. Right, right. That's how I felt. But 4.0 queen, that uh, is so impressive. Uh, thank you. Um, or am I transfer? I went to UCR straight from high school. Yeah. Okay, any, anybody have any more questions? Um, I'll go ahead and share the word of the day as well while we slowly wrap things up. I'll put my um, Instagram in there and then my YouTube as well. I know someone shared the link, but just in case. Um, if I was not a biology major, what would I major in? Um, so I actually came into college thinking like I went in as a biology major, but I wasn't sure if I wanted to pursue medicine. I was kind of interested in like pop culture journalism. So I took one media studies or media cultural class and then I absolutely like did not like it. <laughs> and then I was like, hey, I'm going biology. So if I had to major in something else, I guess it would be that, but I don't think I would be very happy. <laughs> Oh, wait, I realize you should probably take a picture first before we do this, so hold on. <laughs> Are you okay with taking a picture? Be like, because we normally do that. Yeah. Um, yeah, if any members um, want to turn on their cameras and, you know, pose for the camera real quick. Um, <laughs> Chloe. <laughs> okay. Um, Chloe, let us know when you take the picture. Oh, I'm taking it. Okay, everyone smile. Oh, be yeah. Happy. Hi. Thank you for showing my big screen. Okay. Everyone be happy. Oh, oh, you want? Okay, wait, hold on. Let me make you like oh. spotlight. There you go. Perfect, perfect. Okay. <laughs> okay, everyone ready? Three, two, three. Oh, sorry. Yay, I took it. Thank you. Yay. Okay, thank you, Chloe. Now I'll share screens again. Hold on. Oh, yeah, I'm just wondering. This is a really curious question of mine. Like, um, you know, I hear a lot of like people say like, yeah, major in bio, but if it doesn't work out, you're kind of like screwed. <laughs> so um, I personally like the subject, but it makes me question like, you know how like nursing seems like a really good bachelor's cause like you have a job to write when you're done or computer science, but do you like think that the bio like degree was something worthwhile and it was good or do you recommend a different major or what do you think um yeah I think you should do bio if you're like certain that you want to pursue more education um whether it's medical school op like being an optometrist you know podiatry whatever um or maybe research I guess you could get a PhD in biology later on um I think honestly, you should major in what's interesting to you. If you like business, sorry, I'm gonna hold on. I'm gonna plug in my computer really quick. It might like mess up something. Okay, can you all still hear me? Okay. Um, okay. So yeah, if you want to major in like business or film, you know, literally anything that interests you, um, do it because you may not be certain you want to do medicine, right? Um, and then you, like you said, you'll have a better job opportunity after. Uh, as long as you take those prereq classes, you're going to be fine for medical school. In fact, if you major in something other than biology, they might ask you about it in your interview, and it might just be like a more unique point to you because everyone majors in biology when they apply. Yeah, that okay. Thanks for the tip. So, but you liked your bio degree, right? Yeah, I liked it. I liked my okay. classes, except for the ecology class. I liked it. That's, yeah. And there's yeah. also different concentrations, like there's human biology and there's molecular and cell biology and there's biology, biology. Right. So like as someone who's applying to colleges and I'm preparing to do that now, I'm I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> like 
<laughs> what do I do? There's so many choices. So yeah, yeah. I was overwhelmed. Um, yeah, I, I chose general bio because it gave me the most flexibility in choosing my upper division courses and that I really liked. Um, once you are like a molecular bio major, at least at UCR, you're it's just the, the flexibility of choosing the electives just like goes like this, <laughs> um, and you're kind of limited in choosing. So that's the reason I chose general bio, but, uh, when you are first, like, cause you're, when you enter, um, like a UC or whatever school you all apply to USC, um, you're going to be third years, right? So you're going to be taking the upper division courses right away. Okay, yeah, so I would just do research into the upper division courses um, because it seems like if you enter, just say you get into UCLA, you enter UCLA um, human biology and you don't like it, I feel, I, I'm assuming it would be hard to change your major at that point. I'm guessing just because it might be full, my classes might fill up. So um, maybe just do research in like the upper division courses that interest you and just go for whatever that is. Mm, so gen bio gives you that whole range of like human bio or like molecular cell. You can dip your toes into those. Yeah, definitely. Oh, I see. Thank you for explaining that. Yeah, I don't know if that's unique to UCR, but um, because I actually, um, one of my friends was a molecular bio major and I was considering very early on to like switch or something like that, I think. And um, I just remember looking at the upper division courses and I was like, like, I just want the flexibility of being general bio. I think I heard that too, but then like, I personally was attracted to um, human bio because I like, I don't want to learn about plants, no offense to the plants, <laughs> but like someone said, um, oh, but you can dip your toes in a lot of other courses with the with just gen bio and I was like oh that's very interesting so thank you for explaining that that helps clear my head while I, I'm sure many of us are transferring I know the officer team is and um people might transfer next year as well so I appreciate that yeah uh, yeah but anybody else have questions um because we're gonna slowly wrap this up because it is 7 30 uh speak now or what is it? Speak now or hold something? Hold your face. Hold your face. Oh, okay, thanks. Um, okay. Um, really quick. Um, so I'm I have to leave the meeting, but um, thank you everyone for coming. Um, you all are so great and kudos to you for doing this during like the pandemic and like being so motivated, you know. Um I wish you all luck on your journey. Um, feel free to message me directly if you have questions. Um, on Instagram or um, definitely follow, subscribe <laughs> to my YouTube channel. I, I especially if you want to learn about Kaiser, right? It's a new school. Um, yeah. So uh, thank you, everyone. It was so nice to be here today. Thank you, Landra. Thank you. Woo! Bye. Sharing love. Well. <laughs> Have a great night, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.